going to find it. And I'll never forget the night before my operation. I got on my knees and I prayed to God as I have never prayed. And suddenly I realized that I had no right, you see, to ask for my life because so many wonderful people have died, all the soldiers and the wonderful people ahead of me. But I heard God speak to me, Ralph, more than I hear you now. And I know people may think it's mesmerism and it isn't true. But he said to me, don't look to the heavens because I am not there. But I am in the eyes of everybody that needs you. And your life alone isn't important. But if it's a link, a strong link in the chain of humanity, then you have a right to live. And something happened to me then. I will never be frightened again, Ralph, because I was the only one that knew I was going to live. But I knew it. And God has been so wonderful to me, and I only wish I could give that voice to everybody that's within our earshot, because he's there if you'll just find him. June 21st is the day of the operation. How long did it take, Virginia? Well, they tell me I was on the table 10 hours. What was the outcome? Well, again, a lot of people will say this is just superstition or mesmerism. I didn't have one pain. Not one pain from a 10-hour operation, and the third day I walked as straight as a die. And I knew that the biggest step that I was ever going to take now was going to be the step between saying and doing. All my life I'd said I was going to do certain things, but now I was going to do it and do it right away. You, you think that doesn't hold up? Abby's over here crying her eyes out, and so... Uh, the, uh, really if that isn't a, a faith in God plug, I don't know um, what is. Well, now, uh, we come to the uh, part where your daughter comes in, and you I remember this. Do you want to talk about this? I can't <laughs> take it. I don't, I don't know about you. You know, this is the thing. They always thought that your life was crying. Actually, Virginia <laughs> doesn't so cry. It's the knowledge. viewers who cry. You well, see. I, I did. to get that way when the music started. <laughs> I think this is going to be my basketball game. Ralph, dear, I think this is going to be my mother and brother, and I would rather that you did this if you don't mind us. All right, because let's let's, let's roll it. I th I think that it speaks for itself. Uh, it, uh, as I say, Virginia's story is a, a beautiful one, and this will document that fact. <laughs> Do you remember when you played the piano for a benefit at Mackinac Island, Michigan, and forgot half of your selection? <laughs> There's an interesting secret being revealed, Virginia, and by your own brother, too. Here he is, flown here from Chicago, your brother, Justin. Oh, Here's Justin. Oh, Jenny. Oh, Jenny. Yes. Uh, you'd arranged this charity benefit, hadn't you, Justin? Yes, Ralph. And Virginia was playing a piano recital or a piano number on the stage, and halfway through it, she forgot the number. I think it was by Chopin, and she went into Mozart without a stop, just like a regular trooper. <laughs> Nobody knew anything about it excepting the professional musicians, and they laughed so hard they nearly fell out of their chairs. <laughs> this was another case of thrown out money for music lessons. Oh. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Virginia, you always had the gift for making people laugh even without trying sometimes. Yes, I didn't try that time. How are you, darling? Oh, it's so Absolutely. good to see you. Now listen to a voice. And there was one know? time when Virginia's gift of laughter helped Aww. to save my life. Yes, Virginia, Aww. here from Chicago, too, is your mother, Mrs. Bessie Comas. Come on up. Wonderful what did you say, Virginia. Jenny? Look at her figure and look at me. <laughs> You're sure you our mother. Mrs. Comas, this, uh, this dramatic occurrence took place when Virginia was only nine, uh, didn't it? That's right, Mr. Edwards. I was sick, and I thought I was quite sick when I was in the hospital and unhappy. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, but it seemed that the doctor had spoken to the family and said he felt that I... Uh, Need a cheering up. Yes, and you were part of the little plan Virginia contrived to cheer Mother up, weren't you, Justin? Yes, I'll never forget. Ginny put a doll's wig on me, and she put me in her clothes, and I and uh, she wore my clothes, and the two of us went to the hospital together. You were a blonde then, weren't you, Jetty? That was the only time. What did your mother say when she uh, saw you and Justin Virginia come in? He was in your... She realized she was sicker, I think, than she thought. But let me tell you something, <laughs> 
You know, I saw how well Jetty looked as a blind. Would you believe it? We used to look like twins, but then he got older than me. <laughs> and and uh, I realized how good he looked as a blonde, and I decided to become one. <laughs> what happened to you? Well, believe it or not, that little prank of Virginia's really gave you the lift you needed, didn't it, Mrs. Cohen? Well, I felt so good after that, I decided I'd like to get dressed and go home with the children. Uh, the pattern of helping others through your own zest for life is set in your childhood, Virginia. Thank you, Mrs. Comas and Brother Justin. You know, uh, Jenny, I know what a treasure this must be for you now. Uh, uh, Virginia's uh, brother passed away two years ago, and her mother... Two uh, weeks ago. Uh, two weeks ago. But uh, this will be a great treasure Yes, for it, uh, it, it was a moment of great pride for all of us, because uh, there is a continuity of life, and I, I never will stop thinking of them, and that's the way it is. We should have taped this. I could use it as the first show, you know, in yeah. January when we start again. No, I tell you, family love is such an important thing, and I feel so sorry for anybody that doesn't have You're it. You're right. You're right. Of course, I think the youngsters of today really, really do sorry. have that, you know? They are talking about the kids and all, all this and that, but if well, they like to you. talk about their past, they like to talk about... Oh, yes. Uh, tell me about... Tell me about Grandpa. My mm -hmm. kids are saying that. Well, they're 28 now and 29, you know, or 27. This, uh, by the way, this is the bracelet that I got that I made into a necklace. It's like all instant of these It sure is. <laughs> or instant martial arts. And you know how wonderful my Harry was. Ralph was always so generous. And a lot of people wanted personal things to remember. And uh, Ralph said, what would you like us to give? And Harry had a, a full Muzak equipped in a hospital for cerebral palsy children. And he sent... 500 children to underprivileged children to camp oh, and this was lovely. Ralph Edwards and my Harry Thank you. 